In this video, I'm gonna compare solo 401ks with safe harbor 401ks, so you can decide which one might be right for your business. Specifically, I'll help you understand the differences between these 401k plan types, and when you might need to transition to a safe harbor plan from a solo 401k plan. Along the way, I'll discuss the differences between these types of contributions you can make, such as salary deferrals, catch-up contributions, employer matches, and voluntary after-tax contributions. And be sure to pay close attention towards the end because I'm gonna unpack a few concepts that you may not have heard of before that can have you out of compliance with the IRS. So if you have a solo 401k and you've hired employees or will be hiring employees, or perhaps you own multiple business or have a business with your spouse, you may need to transition out of the solo 401k and into the safe harbor plan to avoid massive penalties and problems with the IRS. But before we dive completely in, let me quickly introduce myself if it's your first time watching. My name is Navi Miraj. I'm a certified public accountant who teaches entrepreneurs how to save thousands of dollars in taxes. I do that by providing free content right here on social media, but I also do it through a comprehensive course, which is designed to convert business owners from being a novice into tax savvy entrepreneurs who implement strategies that save them thousands of dollars in taxes each and every year. If you're interested in learning more, please visit my website, which is navimuradcpa.com. Okay, so before I continue, perhaps I should back up just a bit and just briefly define what a solo 401k and safe harbor 401k plan actually are, right? So basically a solo 401k is a 401k plan that is for business owners where the only employees are either the business owner themselves or the business owner's spouse can be part of the solo 401k plan if they're working in the business. Because there are no non-business owner employees, the business does not have to perform what's called non-discrimination testing since there are no other employees that exist that would be receiving unfair treatment when you compare them with the actual owner, okay? However, once you start hiring non-owner employees, these types of plans begin to fall apart and therefore you want to begin looking into what's called a safe harbor 401k. With a safe harbor plan, you have to follow rules provided by the IRS. And if you do, then you do not have to satisfy any government required non-discrimination compliance tests. Said a little bit differently, the safe harbor plan uh, keeps you out of trouble because the safe harbor plan doesn't allow you to treat highly compensated employees or business owner employees any different than non-highly compensated employees or non-business owners, okay? So let's have a look at this comparison chart I created for you and go over the various sort of uh, features, if you will, of each plan, okay? So as you can see, with both plans, you can defer your compensation into the plan. For the 2023 tax year, that's $22,500. Now, both plans also allow for catch-up contributions. So if you're age 50 or older, you can contribute an additional $7,500. Now those amounts I just gave you, they're adjusted every year for inflation. And so they may be the same if you're watching in the future year, like 2024. But if you're watching beyond that, uh, those amounts may have increased, okay? Now, both plans allow you to self-direct. If you haven't heard of that term before, that just means that you can invest in what you know instead of you, the usual sort of stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds, right? So for example, you can invest in cryptocurrency, real estate, promissory notes, etc. okay? So as we work our way further down this list and this sort of chart I created for you, you'll see where things begin to differ a bit, okay? Now for the employer match with a solo 401k, you can match up to 25% of the gross wages you paid yourself on your W-2. So if you're an S corporation, for example, and you paid yourself $40,000, you can get an employer match of $10,000. With the Safe Harbor 401k, you can participate in the employer match, but it's typically limited to 6% of the gross wages you paid yourself. So a quick note about the matching for the Safe Harbor plan is that there are three options. They're called basic matching, enhanced matching, and non-elective contributions. Bottom line is this, you can choose between those three and um, there are pros and cons to each one, but in, you know, for the majority of you who get a safe harbor plan, you can choose between those three and you can match up to 6%, okay? Okay, so the next feature is the voluntary after-tax contribution. If you haven't heard of that term before, you can establish a 401k and within the plan documents is language that exists that allows you to make a voluntary after-tax contribution 
which are then usually converted to Roth dollars. So I have another video on my YouTube channel that discusses this. The title of that video is CPA Explains Mega Backdoor Roth Strategy. So you can kind of do a search for that. Check that video out if you wanna learn more about how that works, okay? In summary, regarding that video, I teach you how to make a mega backdoor Roth contribution, uh, which allows you to put over $60,000 of Roth money into an account in a single year, okay? It's pretty powerful stuff. The point that I wanna make for purposes of this video is that you cannot make a voluntary after-tax contribution with a safe harbor plan. In other words, you can't deploy the mega backdoor Roth strategy with a safe harbor 401k. And you will see, I did add an asterisk here, and that's because technically you could do this type of contribution if you have a safe harbor plan, but you would have to ensure that the plan was still passing the ACP test, okay? ACP stands for Actual Contribution Percentage, all right, that's, the, that's what the test name is called. And it would be honestly quite extremely rare for you to be able to pass that test if you have non-highly compensated employees. So the last point here is an important one, okay? Who are these plans for? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the solo 401k is for businesses where the only employees are the business owners themselves, meaning they do not have any non-owner full-time employees or any long-term part-time employees. So to be clear and even more specific, you the owner, your spouse, other business owners, and their spouses can all participate in the solo 401k plan. Additionally, a full-time employee that is under age 21, a union employee, or a non-resident alien employee are allowed under a solo 401k plan. Now, another question I get often is what about your children? Can they participate in the solo 401k? And the answer is technically yes, but only if they are 3% or greater owner of the company. If they are not a 3% or greater owner, they cannot participate. However, having a child under 21 who works in the business does not disqualify you from having the solo 401k because as I noted a moment ago, they are under 21 and can be excluded from sort of the definition of an employee here, okay? What about part-time employees? Now, the rules on this are changing, so I'm gonna give you the rules that begin in 2024, okay? Here's how it works. If you have a long-term part-time employee that has been working for you as an employee for at least 500 hours per year in three consecutive years, beginning with the year 1-1-2021, that long-term part-time employee qualifies as an employee for purposes of the solo 401k. And you'll have to transition to a safe harbor plan, okay? Now, you might not have heard of that before. That is a new rule due to the SECURE Act, okay? The old rules related to part-time employees still apply, so you gotta be careful there, okay? If you have a part-time employee that works a 1,000 hours or more throughout the year, they too are an employee and you'll have to transition to a safe harbor plan or close down your solo 401k and roll it into an IRA, okay? And again, if these part-time employees are under the age of 21, they can be excluded. Okay, let me now touch on the controlled group rules and the affiliated service group rules. Now, each one of these would take an hour to unpack fully, but I'm just gonna give you a hint at what they are about, okay? So you know enough about them to be a little dangerous and do some research about them. So what is a controlled group? Basically, let's say you have a business in which you have a solo 401k because you meet all the requirements I've been discussing throughout this video, but you also have another business which has uh, actual employees, right? Non-owner employees, and therefore that would disqualify you from contributing to a solo 401k for that second business. Well, in that case, both businesses would be considered as one business for purposes of qualifying for a solo 401k. Here's the takeaway as this is a pretty complex topic. Um, you know, trying to unpack this in a, in a short video on social media is pretty difficult to do. If you are an owner in a second business and that second business has non-owner employees, you're probably in a controlled group. Even if you own a minority interest in that second business, depending on who the other owners are, it still may be considered part of a controlled group for purposes of establishing retirement plans. Another rule that was put into place was the affiliated service group rules, okay? An example of an affiliated service group would be two companies that, although they don't share common ownership and therefore don't constitute a control group, they still work together to serve the same customers. 
So for example, a management company that provides management services to another company. If you set up an arrangement like this, you may not be able to contribute a solo 401k, all right? So let's say husband owns a business and a wife establishes a second business with non-owner full-time employees, which provides services to the husband's business, okay? That would be considered an affiliated service group and disqualify the husband and the wife to be able to contribute to a solo 401k plan. Again, the rules around control groups and affiliated service groups are quite complex. The bottom line is, if you have a business that qualifies for a solo 401k, and you also have ownership in a second business, or you're dealing or, or providing services to another business that you have a connection with, you need to consult with someone who understands these rules and can help you determine if you have a compliance problem or not, okay? So in summary, what you should be taking away from this video is that if you qualify for a solo 401k, you should likely go that route. But if you do not, the Safe Harbor 401k is still a great option that will allow you to contribute the salary deferral, the catch-up contribution, and an employer match. The Safe Harbor plan may also be a great tool to help you attract talent or keep existing talent, right? You wanna keep those employees, especially if they're high performers, as they look for benefits beyond your wages, okay? So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you either in the course or in the next video.